Hi there, this is the RPS Project, I'm Richard and today I'm going to have a look at the Gicle Pear or Zicle Pear, I'm not quite sure how you pronounce it, it's spelt S-Z-I-K-L-A-I Gicle It's actually named after a guy called George Clifford Gicle He was a Hungarian, uh, born in Hungary in the very early part of the 20th century and ended up in the United States, but he was an engineer, um, electronics engineer, and he came up with lots of designs and lots of um, developments within electronics. But one of the things he did that, that seems to have got his name on it is the Gicle Pair. Now, the Gicle Pair is very much like the Darlington transistor, only there's a fundamental difference. Instead of having two NPN transistors, you've got one NPN and a PNP. So, Let's have a look on the bench and see if uh, see if I can understand this thing. Okay, so um, on the bench here now. So I'm going to have a quick look at this diagram that I've roughed together. Um, but it is the basic um, configuration for the Chiclet pair. If anybody wants to correct me on the pronunciation, please do. As far as I'm concerned, it's Chiclet pair. Could be pronounced differently. Other pronunciations are available. <laughs> anyway, um, what I've basically got here on this setup is if I remove the resistors, I was to ignore them, these two transistors are the basics of, of the pair. We've got an NPN and a PNP um, transistor. And from what I can tell, basically, is that if you turn this transistor on, this will turn this transistor on. Um, this will be supposedly limited because that's at ground, so that will always be just the voltage at that point, but the current will increase. This will then hold that at its turn on voltage, which will be sort of constant. Um, but again, as you increase the current here, you'll get more current flow here. This will give more current flow to this junction, and this will give more current flow across this transistor, which will mean R3, which is effectively acting as my load, will end up being um, driven by whatever current this can put through it. Uh, and hopefully, I'll be able to uh, look at this uh, circuit and um, prove to myself that uh, that is what's happening and that I understand it that way. Now, to turn on this um, base on the NPN, uh, and by the way I'm using a 2N2222 for the uh, NPN transistor, I've got this resistor divider. It seems to me to be the simplest way to, to bias up this uh, transistor. Um, but I'm going to have a varying voltage coming into that. So when it starts off, this voltage will be low. Uh, and obviously the current will be very low. Um, and as I turn that voltage up, uh, I get more voltage on the base. But obviously it will only require what's needed to turn on the uh, base emitter junction. But I will get increased current. And as I turn up the voltage, more current means this transistor will conduct more current through it and that will obviously turn on this junction and this one is an S9015 just a batch of PNP transistors I've got stacked around somewhere um, seems to do the job um, so obviously as that turns on more because this has got more current being through the collector emitter junction, this base, this yeah, emitter base junction will turn on to the voltage you want, but I'll get more current until we get a lot more current through here. I suppose you could easily toast this uh, circuit if you had only a very small load or very low um, resisted load on there. You could draw quite a lot of current all of a sudden and really just, yeah, toast that. Uh, PNP transistor quite quickly. But that's the basic diagram. The other odd thing about this 
is that if I was to draw, I can draw it on there. Me. like that, um, that's the basic block. Even though that's the emitter, this is considered to be the collector. That's considered to be the emitter, and this obviously is the base. So that's that's the basic diagram. So what I'm gonna do now is have a look at this uh, and prove to myself that I know what's doing. I'm gonna have a look at the current going into the base, and I'm gonna put look the current here to see the current coming through it. And then I'm also going to have a look at the um, at the voltages um, across here. I think really like across here and across here to sh show that when this turns on, it's uh, it's doing what I think it is. So um, anyway, let's get on with it and um, actually have a look at the uh, at the circuit. Okay, so I've got this all set up on here. Um, the voltage into the circuit is in two parts. I've got 12 volts basically onto my main circuit. Well, well, onto yeah, onto the PNP. And I've got a variable voltage that I'm going to adjust from this power supply. Sorry, it's a bit noisy. Um, it's going to change the voltage across the resistor divider here, which is basically going to give me a change in the current, which is going to be displayed here onto the base. At the moment, I've got this set up, so I'm looking at the current on the output. Um, on this uh, cruder drawing, the um, basically it's here. It's where my ammeter is, so I'm seeing the current from the whole circuit, really, because you get current from there, current from there, which is going to come round, and current there. So I'm seeing basically, except for the bit of current that's coming through the resistor divider over here, then I'll be seeing the current here. So um, so yeah, let's turn this uh, turn this up, turn the voltage up across the resistor divider and start to see what I'm going to get. And hey, look at that. I'm not even reading anything on the base at the moment and I've already got 30 milliamps um, on that one. I'm at 4 volts now across the resistor divider but the base is not showing any current. This is in microamp range. And you get, I've got 80 milliamps, so this is really amplifying quite a lot. I can't even read multimeters. They're, you know, they're basic multimeters, so they they're not able to read below that microamps. But I'm already getting an output. At what point am I going to get? Oh, look at that! Am I nearly four and a half? I got 4.5 volts basically before I'm able to read any current on the base. Uh, it's still not able to read it very well. Well, I got 140 milliamps output, and I just keep turning it up. I think 5.5, 6 volts across the resistor divider. But now the base, it's got 33 microamps. The output stage, 230 milliamps. It uh, cranks up 6.5, 7 volts. So, you know, I can smell something warm, um, and I know it's not the resistors on my on R3 because they're high wattage. So, this transistor, I really, well, it's only a little thing. I imagine that's going to get quite warm, going to get toasty. Probably burn this circuit out if I had that on for too long. 93 microamps, 300 milliamps. Let's just get this voltage up, take it up to 8 volts. 150 microamps, 340 milliamps. That's a hell of a gain. And 9 volts, 225 microamps, 360 milliamps. There will come a point where this will not go up really much because my R3 is a resistor, it's a resistive load, so it will eventually restrict the amount of current, which is good because, like I say, I think um, my T2, my S9015, is already getting quite toasty. If I just push this up to about the maximum, it's about 9.9 .9 is about the maximum I can get out of this power supply over here. Um, 297, 98 
micro amps onto the base and my output is 370 milliamps so that's a hell of a gain so I suppose if you put in the right load resistive load or whatever you were going to put in there that would allow more current to flow and you designed it with the appropriate PNP transistor you could get a lot more current through the circuit but um, let's have a little bit of an investigation now I'm just going to uh, turn that off let's just disconnect turn that all off properly disconnect that from there and have a look at the voltages that are going through this circuit just to prove to myself that I am understanding it the way I think I should be so change that now I want to look at voltages I'm going to start with the voltage across the on the base actually I'm going to look at the voltage on the base so I'm going to put across the base emitter voltage on T1 that's where I'll start so that in there that in there turn the noisy thing on circuits on and straight away you can see that I've got 0.22 220 millivolts on the base of course that won't turn it on normally it has to be about 0.6 so let's just turn this up until I get about get that 0.6 of a volt Well, 0.59 you can see it's turned on there's a bit of um, current there on the base one microamp for that 0.59 590 millivolts on the base instead of you know it's on the junctions on so in theory if I now look at the um, I was gonna say if I look at the junction what I'll do is I'll just turn up this voltage across the resistor divider so I get more current going into the base and what we'll find is that this base voltage won't increase that much the um, base voltage being at its maximum because the emitter side is effectively at ground it's a, a, a there's no yeah I can crank that up and you can see the currents going up loads but the voltage on the base is steady all the way up to that 9.9 .9. once we get to once the junctions fully turned on it's not going to go anything above that let's turn that back down because um, every time I turn it up I can smell the transistor going toasty oh actually look at that I may have actually killed it but I've lost my voltage on the uh, on the base so I would say I've already killed that no no it's still working just doesn't like it yeah it's having problems yeah that's the thing uh, I mean that the, uh, get the appropriate transistor otherwise you will toast this and I'm, I'm, I've toasted a number of them already in looking at this circuit so let's take that out there and have a look at the collector emitter voltage on uh, T1 so yeah this is all over the place now I might have to put another transistor in because I probably killed this already Okay. Perhaps I should get some better transistors. These aren't particularly good. They're just a right. Um, uh, fingers. It's going to be warm. Yeah, that's warm. Right, put another one in. I don't know how long this one will survive for. Not very long, I don't expect. So, 
Uh, <laughs> let's turn this on and we're going to look at the collector emitter voltage across T1, the uh, 2N, 2, 2, 2, 2, whatever. So what's that giving me? Getting a voltage in there already. So, I've got, without this thing really being turned on, 8 volts, 9 volts, so, but as I turn it up, I will be turning on the base, with the base voltage, and the collector emitter really should drop, so that effectively as more current goes in, I'm turning on the um, transistor T1 more and more and more, until effectively, uh, there is almost no resistance between the collector and emitter, so the, that that T1 is turned on fully. Quick look at the diagram. This junction is fully turned on, meaning this junction is fully turned on. So the potential difference between these two points is all but zero. The effect of that is to turn this junction on fully. Now we'll have a quick look at the voltage across, basically across the emitter to base junction of the PNP. So that needs to go to there, <clears throat> and that needs to go to there. Is that right? Yeah, the emitter base voltage. So at the moment, the circuit is effectively turned off, and as I turn it on, you can see the junction comes up, but after a certain point, it doesn't really rise that much. You get to about about there, then it stops, so the junction is fully turned on, and we're at the, the most voltage I can get out of the power supply. Huge amounts of current into the base, and that didn't change. So much so, but again, so uh, just to think about this, we have um, basically the current across the collector emitter is at zero volts. So when that happens, the junction to turn on the PNP is fully on, and the emitter base of T1 will be held at the switch on voltage, which is about 0.8, um, and effectively you're just gaining more on the current, so the current's being increased, because after all, a BJT is a current amplifier, that's what it does. So, uh, another quick look, I'll just look at this one last bit. This is the voltage across the T2 from the um, emitter to collector, basically across this point here. So as I turn this up, I know that the voltage across the base to emitter of T1 is going to be at about 0.7. The voltage across the emitter to base on T2 is going to be about 0.8, and the voltage across the emitter collector of T1 will go down to zero, so the thing is fully turned on, and the voltage across the emitter to collector of T2 will drop, and it will keep dropping until, until about there really, I mean that's as much as it will go down, maybe it might go down more if I put more voltage across it, until the, until the voltage that's across there emitter to base will be equivalent to the voltage across the emitter to collector and you won't be able to turn it on anymore <coughs> excuse me but you will be able to get more current going through the more current you put on here there's a potential difference between these two is basically zero 
so the whole thing is turned on it's fully turned on but we're not getting any more voltages we're just getting more current greater current here greater current through here more current through there means more current through here and the load can use that whatever that load is but um, like I said it'll get toasty and it'll burn out because that transistor the S9015 isn't particularly good at handling all that much current it gets very warm and it'll die if I leave it on but yeah that's that's the sheet clay pair seems like quite a nice setup really quite good because unlike the Darlington I only need my 0.7 voltage junk across this junction to turn the whole thing on and then after that it's just current gain you're just amplifying the current don't need any more than that whereas with the Darlington I've got two junctions to turn on yeah I like that that's great quite a nice nice little circuit so there you have it the Giclade pair or Ziclade pair however you want to pronounce it um, also known as the complementary feedback pair or the compound transistor um, however you want to call it it's a great little device once I got past that little stumbling block of how they one transistor turns on the other well you know everything came together it seemed to uh, be quite understandable and really quite a nice little design um, if anything even slightly better dare I say than the Darlington pair which I really quite like difference being though is that you can buy a Darlington pair in a all-in-one package the Giclade pair you can't if you want a Giclade pair um, set up you have to do it yourself so uh, yeah that's the only real difference I suppose um, as far as the actual packaging goes um, I say the two items even though they seem very much the same are actually different animals really and one of the other um, great things about the Giclade pair is that you can actually swap the two round in their position um, because in their current position uh, as the foot and the basic position in that you'd look at um, the, the pair work like an NPN transistor but if you swap them round you can actually make them operate like a PNP transistor so that's great something else maybe I ought to have a look at and, and try out and see if I can understand how that's working I think that's uh, something in the future but anyway there you go um, cheap clay pair great device anyway if you like this video give me a thumbs up if you didn't thumbs down subscribe and all comments are welcome. See you next time.